My name is Paul Pachowski, and uh, I'm a charter boat captain out on Lake Erie. I go out fishing every day. I love to fish. I love to be on the water. I'm not a happy person unless I can see or touch the water. It's impossible to separate fishing from the culture and economy of the Great Lakes, especially for those like Captain Paul, who make a living taking anglers onto Lake Erie. But declines in fish populations have made it harder and harder to catch the limit. Back when I started this 30 years ago, anybody could go out there and catch their walleyes, just throw a lure over the side of the boat, put the rod over your shoulder, don't even pay attention, and the rod will jerk down and you'd reel up a fish. Now, in order to get your fish, you gotta be pretty much on your game. Key to getting fish numbers up in Western Lake Erie is restoring coastal wetlands. Over the decades, we've traded coastal development for habitat to the detriment of our economy and recreation. These days, 11% of all remaining wetlands in southeast Michigan are contained in the Nature Conservancy's Erie Marsh Preserve. So it's here that a major project is underway to restore what little habitat remains to maximize the benefit for all. Coastal wetlands provide some storm dampening uh, capacity, flood control, they filter water and water that flows through them actually comes out cleaner once it's been through a wetland. So they provide clean water, they provide clean air, and they provide habitat for fish and wildlife. Earthen dikes built more than 70 years ago disconnected the marsh from Lake Erie. The site is being re-engineered to re-establish that connection. The purpose of the water control structure is to allow uh, fish access into the marsh to provide additional spawning opportunity. And the fish passage structure will allow them free access to come and go and, and do their thing. Coming into the preserve, into the diked wetland, there's more vegetation available. It provides a protected area from both predators and from natural environment, meaning high winds and wave energy that can uh, harm some eggs or young fish. So it provides uh, foraging habitat, just a protected uh, site for fish to use. Another obstacle to restoring fish habitat at Erie Marsh is Phragmites, a plant that's familiar to most. You're likely to see it growing on the sides of roads and highways. But even though we see Phragmites at every turn, it's not a native species. Like Asian carp, it's an invader to the Great Lakes. And at Erie Marsh, Phragmites has room to take over. Growing so densely, it creates a green wall literally forcing out all other life. This in turn forces site managers to go to great lengths to eradicate this pernicious plant. We're spraying with herbicide, then we're either mowing or burning to get rid of the standing dead plant material. And then the key component is really to flood those areas. And the new pumps and water control structure and distribution canal will allow us to flood all the areas that are invaded by Phragmites up to about two or three feet, really drown them out to make sure they're dead. And then when we draw that water down, um, there's native species in the seed bank and those will spring right up. The rarity and importance of coastal wetland habitat to the Great Lakes sparked a $2.5 million investment into this site by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Given that Erie Marsh represents the 11% of wetlands in southeast Michigan, and as such is one of the largest left on the Lake Erie shoreline, we thought it would have significant uh, benefits to restoring this area. These kind of habitats can bounce back really fast. The habitat response is almost immediate. I've seen projects where we're under construction and water comes in a rainstorm and the birds are already there. With a little bit of investment at this point, we can really get a big bang for our buck and these areas just need a little push in the right direction before they spring back and uh, they regain some of their historical uh, quality and benefits. And for lifelong fishermen of Lake Erie like Captain Paul, that can't come soon enough. Lake Erie only has 2% of the water, but it produces 50% of the fish for human consumption that come out of the Great Lakes. That's a big number. And that's why this, this area is so important to not just protect, but to help flourish.